once emotion stirred within me. Joy, sorrow, fear. Now they are but echoes, distant and dead. In their place remains a pulse, a relentless beat driving me onward. And still, cold, unyielding steel, my sole companion in this desolate world. The night wanes, its embrace fleeting. With the darkness as my cloak, I must chart the treacherous path to Castle Ensis. When dawn breaks, we shall strike. The bridge is well fortified, the ballista standing as their assurance. I shall meet them with full might, yet now is not the hour to strike. I have calculated that with the rising great star, the soldier at the ballista will be blinded by its glare, with the star at my back. This fleeting advantage may grant the precious moment needed to strike. My loyal torrent, paralyzed by fear, vanishes from sight. The burden now rests upon me to complete the task at hand. Only the stench of burning flesh stirred me from my reverie, revealing the horror before me. Bodies, so many bodies, displayed like ornaments of pride. There was no mistaking it. I had at last reached Castle Ensis. My initial greeting was from a colossal foe, wielding a great sword. The blue glintstone embedded within it shone even from a distance. It seems the trolls stand united with their Aryan comrades, even in the shadowed depths of these forsaken lands. The giants fall reverberated through the castle walls, its thunderous crash drawing the gaze of the motley army of foes. They fall one by one, succumbing to the fate delivered by my dual blades. I reach a ledge and am struck with awe at the sight before me. The castle's design is a masterpiece, ingeniously incorporating every waterfall, cliff, and overlook to create an impregnable defense. As I cleanse my blade of the enemy's blood, my gaze lifts to behold a heavily armored knight, bearing an unforgiving weapon and a shield that surely outweighs even my own stature. In a clash of excruciating blows, each strike poised to end the gruesome dance, he finally succumbs. A short distance away, I stumble upon another cross, bearing the message, I abandon you the flesh of my body. The main gate to the next layer of this fortress stands barred from within. I must employ cunning, navigating waterfalls and cliffs with the grace of an eagle hunting its prey. descend through the labyrinthine pockets of this artfully wrought fortress, keen to uncover an alternative ingress. Through shadowed caves and cascading waterfalls I press. I marvel at the innocence of these rare creatures, for they are a sight seldom seen amidst these lands, until at last a ladder emerges before me. My initial strategy of stealth is abruptly foiled. I must remain vigilant, anticipating foes lurking behind every corner. At long last, I stumble upon a lever that lifts the main gate. This small mercy affords me a fleeting pause to gather my resolve and brace for the arduous night that lies ahead. I press forward, showing no mercy to any creature with a beating heart. To 
with each layer of defense breached, the overwhelming sense grows that the true adversary draws nearer. As I round the corner, I behold the next layer of this seemingly endless fortress, a blend of beauty and death laid out before me. I spend the next hour savoring the view and the fleeting beauties that remain in this world. In that moment, as the great star nestles behind the clouds to rest, a hint of peace washes over me. Foolish, tarnished. This death wish of yours ends here. In the name of Relana, the Sword of Mesmer. I swiftly discern that this night surpassed any foe encountered since our arrival at Basilensis. The regression and mastery of both steel and magic are truly formidable. Finally, I locate the opening and deliver a precise artery severing blow that surely seals Moonrithil's fate. One thing is now clear. We are getting close. In a serene alcove of the fortress, I discover a trove of books. Eager to gain every advantage, I know knowledge wields power as mighty as my blade. Among them, I find volumes dedicated to unraveling the mystery of Rilana. I seize a few books and a candle, then settle in to read, eager to uncover their secrets. Moonrithil, Rilana's steadfast chamberlain, formed a unique bond with the giant trolls serving the royal family. Her chambers, adorned with tapestries of the trolls' heroic history, stood as a testament to their unity. Relana, a former Carrion princess, boldly renounced her birthright to stand by Mesmer, despite knowing the moon's brilliance couldn't save him. Her love for her sister Renala endured, marked by the gift of her black hair before leaving. Their bond, forged in childhood beneath the twin moons, remained unbroken. Relana wields a Carrion light greatsword, embedded with blue glintstone, two swords in one. When two-handing, she carries a straight sword engraved with golden flame in her left hand. Here and here alone, moon and fire unite. My findings only deepen my disturbance and kindle a ravenous hunger for more knowledge. Why would Relana, a knight born into every luxury one could desire, forsake her birthright for Mesmer, a crazed mass murderer? I press on, relentlessly pursuing Relana. The Carian mages are mere obstacles in my path. Blood and screams surround me. Perhaps I am the true villain here. As nightfall devours the sky, I round the corner to face the final layer of this formidable fortress. The clock is ticking, Relana. Your time. Draws near. In the distance, I hear familiar footsteps, the clank of armor echoing like the night from before. This time, however, I am well versed in their combat style keenly aware of their vulnerabilities.
with their defenses stripped away layer by layer. I finally discover a secluded nook within the castle to gather my bearings. I take a seat beside the stranger, alive or otherwise. They show no intent to kill me, a rarity among my encounters. In this fleeting moment of peace, I finally find the opportunity to examine the scroll I retrieved from the castle's entrance gate. It bears the inscription, Addressed to any kindred spirit, whom also pursues Mikella's trail. Kind Mikella seeks the tower sealed by shadow, and the gate to divinity found there. If we are to reach him, we must burn the tree that seals the path, and for that we require a flame. Sincerely, Needle Knight Leda. With the ultimate prize within reach, there is only one task left. Prepare for war. I shed my blood-soaked armor from today's battles and don new pieces, each strategically chosen for the upcoming fight. Based on earlier attained knowledge, speed is crucial if I hope to stand any chance evading her dual blades. Equipping backhand blades noticeably reduces my load. Balancing with the sturdy Great Jar helmet and veteran's armor for added defense. The Solitude Gauntlets and Greaves complete the setup. A perfect combination. Now, there is nothing left to do but dance. Without uttering a word, Rilana swiftly advances toward me, her blade shimmering with intent. Moments, I feel the undeniable strength that Berlana wields. I must keenly observe her tactics, lest this fortress becomes my eternal resting place. And then, as often occurs in battles of life and death, something seized control of my being. Deep focus consumed me transforming the fight into a blissful dance to the death. Sister, my sweet young sister, Rolana. Oh, how much I've missed you. Dost thou recall that blissful night of our youth, down by the lake? The twin moons in their celestial dance, overlapped above us in unparalleled beauty. At last, you may rest and bask in the eternal warmth of the great moon. Or perhaps, you'd prefer... Rebirth? 